Well, it, Nigel, it, it, just start with this morning's news. I, I would imagine Tommy, pretty happy man, getting a, uh, another award after a good start to the season for him. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a really nice award for him to win. But we're back to work now, so he needs to uh, enjoy the moment as always, um, and recognise what's got him into that sort of position, and and, and that is being himself, uh, working hard, and. Uh, Showing some humility, so it's uh, it, it, it's a good, it's a really good award for him and his teammates, I think, because it it, um, it reflects the sorts of performances that we've that we've had so far, or that we've shown that we've uh, have made an improvement. But um, yeah, back to work now. Yeah, and that's that's one of the I guess good and bad things about football. It is completely a what have you done for me lately business, isn't it? Because you can be amazing six weeks ago mm. if you've not done it on Saturday. It's not really a lot of use. I think that's the nature of sport, and that's probably how it should be anyway. But um, you know, I've, I've said myself that in in recent weeks, where when things have been going pretty well for us in terms of results, there's always an element of being aware that it's not, it, we don't get either carried away or we don't uh, start looking at uh, life through rose-tinted spectacles. It's a um, we've we've made some progressions, but it's it's still early days. We've got a uh, a very um, big week for us now, playing two sides who have been in the Premier League, um, and we're going to. Judge yourselves uh, playing against those two, but we're going into both games trying to win them both. And you and the coaching staff obviously sort of set that tone. Within the dressing room, do you sort of rely on certain key individuals there to make sure that, that those messages are absolutely filtering through to everybody there? It's not about being dictatorial at all. It's about trying to, it's trying to build a framework for them to, to drive it themselves. That's, uh, those types of dressing rooms are the ones which... Um, can achieve success in relative terms. In other words, they can be as good as uh, the players that we have. And I think on top of that, it's it's you know our job is uh, as staff members is to is to try and if you like set the tone. But we can only do it to a certain extent. It's about the players themselves. And um, yeah, I don't really. I don't really see the the necessity to talk too much about that because we are, you know, we're sort of what eight games in, and 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 um, unfortunately we didn't play at the weekend, which we would have liked to have done. But uh, now we've got two more games before the international break um, begins, and uh, and so it's it's important that the standards that we've tried to set and attain so far have been uh, continue and we want to try and get uh, two important away wins if we can we know it'd be tough in both games but we but th there's no point um, aiming low we want to try and uh, get the best out of ourselves in every game that we play with both teams coming up obviously as you mentioned ex Premier League so that gives them vastly more financial resources not just than you but most teams in the division do, how does that sort of play out on the pitch how much more difficult does that make your job going into these games I don't think of it like that if I'm honest they have what they have and we are we are trying to shape our own team um, in the way that it's possible for us to do that it doesn't really it doesn't really matter too much about what other people have um, they have other pressures in terms of uh, meeting other people's expectations and having a weight of yeah responsibility and expectation from their own fan bases to to bounce back so that in itself is um, something that uh, they have to they have to carry themselves we you know, I don't really worry too much about other people's situations apart from try and understand what the best way for us to go into any game is. And, and uh, I would always prefer to concentrate very much on us being as positive as we can.
and making sure that our performance is as close to our maximum as uh, as we can make it because if that's the case then whatever the result you can come away with at least some element of realism that we've done everything that we can to get a result for ourselves so in terms of, of what you need to do particularly against a, a norwich team that started slowly but are, are finding a little bit more form what are the keys to you doing well on wednesday we've got to play our own game i mean we know that they're a possession side we know the system of play that they that they adopt um but they'll also be aware of our strengths too and what we have to make sure we do is we don't disappoint them and just uh, and ourselves well fingers crossed that doesn't happen just finally squad wise is any picked up knocks anybody available that hasn't been for, uh, for no, Wednesday we're, we're, we're as we were really and uh, and we continue to work hard to make sure that um, we minimalize the risk of picking injuries up which is always a um, it's always one of our main uh, aims of every training day and every week to to uh, get as many players available as possible because it means then that it's about having good selection issues because we've got people available so yes we operate with a tight squad and we've talked at length about whether we can or can't add to it and the necessity or lack of necessity it doesn't matter it's always about us trying to improve the squad at any given time but we can always improve the squad um, during the season by continuing to develop so let's see where we go but uh, there'll be times this year that will be that we will have to be a bit more uh, adaptable and, and creative because of selection issues thank you very much pleasure Nigel we spoke on Thursday about and you said you wanted your side to show greater efficiency yeah can you elaborate on that a little bit and how do you go about doing that in well I mean efficiency in terms of the ability to to close out games I, I think that was the context in which I was uh, talking because I think I spoke after the game at Blackburn for instance about us being good as a counter-attacking side as we've been for a while now but I think our possession was also good we we uh, passed the ball with some authority for decent spells too but there are times that we can be um, yeah a bit more our game management maybe our ability to kill games when um, our opponents are trying to to get back into a, some sort of a rhythm. Um, there's a bit of gamesmanship involved in there, and uh, some people might not like that. But tough, it's part of the game. Um, gamesmanship's important uh, within reason, um, and and I also think we've yeah we're not as soft as we used to be. So. I think you've, you probably will have seen a few events this year where at least players have reacted with some uh, emotion and sometimes controlled aggression, which is important too. It's not about it's not about uh, um, endorsing uh, poor behaviour, but it's but I think it is important that we are uh, a team which looks after itself and each other on the pitch. And I think that's something which is um, better, uh, more evident. Um, so, you know, it might not be everybody's idea of uh, <laughs> good sportsmanship, but we're here to win and we need to learn how to win in different ways. And sometimes you've, you've got to be able to uh, win games ugly um, knowing that we still have the ability to play so all those things are are at times uh, you know I suppose we're looking for perfection that is always going to be elusive but um, if I ever sit here and say I'm totally satisfied then I think I may as well just get up and go home because I'll because that's the time to 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 finish so um we are always work in progress 
and we will remain that all the way through the season, I think. Just picking up on a, a little comment you said in there about the side not as soft hmm. as they were last season. How how have you changed that? Because the court I haven't changed anything. I, I haven't changed anything. The players, the the dynamics within the squad have changed. The the um, the development of players individually but also collectively has continued. So uh, sometimes one of the hardest things to do is to let things evolve in a natural way. And I think everybody seems to have an opinion that it's always about uh, ruling by uh, a firm, a f with a firm grip. It's not about that. It's sometimes one of the most difficult things to allow is is a natural evolution of, of what what the mood is and what the what the internal dynamics of of the the workplace is and i think that's also in, important to allow happen to happen but also with the understanding that there will be times for interventions and that sometimes that will be from players sometimes it will be from staff can I ask about Kane Wilson? How has he progressing in training at the moment? I yeah, I mean, Kane's had a Kane's had a frustrating time for himself just because he had a really good pre-season, suffered an injury before the start of the season, and has uh, been kept out the side by a very accomplished um, performance level of of, of Mark Sykes and uh, Alex Scott's played there as well. So, you know, that will be a frustration for him, but he's. But I remind myself as well, and I think it's important for other people to remember that he's making a step up of, although they got promoted to the first division, of, of, of two two leagues, two divisions. And my expectations for him this year are probably a bit more realistic than other people's, and including his own. Uh, but he'll get his opportunity at some point, and he's just got to make sure that when, when he uh, gets his chances that it's a... It appears for the team for it to be uh, as seamless as possible because that's when you make changes to the starting eleven. It's really important that all right players do bring their own strengths and and their own um, elements of their own game, but it's also important that they're able to fit into what the team does. And that's one of our, I think, strengths this year is we've been we've been able to be unchanged and also that it's you know how we play is is i think more evident this year when i was last here for the under 21 game i think i saw dean Gherkin here has he been employed as a coach now is that is that your appointment no 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 oh, I, I saw him talking to, to harvey Miles richards but I assumed. no he's not an appointment of mine no. oh okay is he just working with for, with the under twenty one? Is it? Yes. Okay. Let's go about um, Joe Lowe as well. Playing for the under twenty one. So I'm impressed with you doing his performances. He's been a um, yeah, yeah, look, he's done okay. I mean, uh, again, the the there's my my take on these situations is not to is not to is is not to if you like, just confirm what's happening elsewhere. It doesn't, you know, it's not a, it's not a, how other people see things. He's done okay he's, and his development's going all right. Um, but that doesn't mean he's uh, imminently going to be involved with the first team. Um, there's an awful long way to go. And, you know, we've got players currently in the first team squad who are, who are, doing okay i mean george tanner is ahead of somebody like him so when you look at these youngsters who have who are making uh, decent appearances for the under 21s for instance that is there's an awful long way to go before before those players can be um considered in any way for the first team so um, yeah, he's done okay, but he missed a lot of football last year with injury, and he's making positive steps this year. But that's what it is at the moment, and I think it's important to manage people's expectations on that. So we've got 
some youngsters who have been in and around the first team squad at times. Um, Dylan Kadjit being one, and I think he in particular has uh, has looked um, unfazed and has the attributes now to to be included from time to time when it's when it's you know appropriate. But um, you know, outside of that, I, I think we have to be very careful how we how we view youngsters prefer, pre performing at the under-21 level. You know, it, it's, it's, it's never a, a straightforward process just to say, okay, here's the next one, and like, it doesn't work like that. So they'll, you know, they'll be, he's, he's doing okay, um, but that's where we're at at the moment. Finally, from me, he says, within the summer, that you don't want players to run down their contracts. Yeah, I can't do much about the ones that seem to be doing that. Has there been discussions that there's been no sort of duties? No, not with some of them. No, and look, it's, now's too early. Now's too early. Um, I think it's important that players play for contracts as well. Um, I think it's important to <coughs> that you know what the the... the the scenario has been in the last two summer windows when players' contracts have been up, and you know I don't want to, I don't want to get ahead of uh, the situation. It, it, at some point, there, I'm sure individuals, representatives will have a chat with Richard at some point, but you know, and it will be driven by also conversations that we have internally about. Where we see the club, de uh, the squad developing, um, but there's an awful lot of football to be played before some decisions are made on players. So, you know, I have no problem with saying at the moment that there are a number of players who will continue to have to play for a new contract, and I think that is it's quite healthy, really. Okay, thank you.